We are now on Daf Mem Aleph from Adbet. We learned this Gemara already, but I want to go back to it tonight, see it a little more in depth, and learn uh, a little bit in terms of the, some of the Rishonim, the discussions about this uh, latter section, which actually has some practical application for us when we daven about holding things in hand. If you look um, uh, just uh, on the narrow lines up from the bottom, it would be in the narrow lines, two, three, four, five lines up, uh, the last five lines in the narrow lines, three words in is Amar Mar Bar Amemal Rav Ashi, Abat Saluye Kamatsli Bay. My father says, Mar Bar Amemar, that uh, my father would daven holding the lulav in his hand. The Gemara points out this is just a continuation, whereas the last section was about the Chavivut mitzvah, how much you're willing to spend on a mitzvah, which by the by, I spared you all the back and forth. We'll get to it, I guess. Next time we come back to Masechet Sukkot or for Sukkot, how much do you actually have to spend? What's the El of Zuz? What does that mean? He spent El of Zuz for a little of an etrog. Was he extremely wealthy? Did he spend his whole, um, all of his assets on it? How much is it? No, so a whole discussion, not not for now, but we're up to the, the, the Chavivot of the Mitzvah here. Uh, so one to the one issue to the other is my father held it in Henry Davin, Maitre, a contradiction. We have a halach of Sukkot from Masechet uh, Brachot, it's codified this way in Shulchan Aruch. Sadi Dalid, Sadi Hey, Sadi Vav, somewhere there. The Shulchan Aruch actually codifies this: Lo Yochaz Adam Tefillin Biyad of a Sefer Torah B'Chekav Eid Palel. Don't hold a Sefer Torah uh, uh, against your chest. Don't hold Tefillin in your hand and Davin at the same time. Really Ashton Ben Mayim. Don't urinate when you have them. Uh, you know when you, they're with you. Really Shan Bahen. Don't sleep uh, uh, with them. Lo Shena Kevlo Shena Rai and don't even make it a temporary sort of like a snooze. Nothing. Uh, um, uh, the um, other examples that come up, and each one, of course, representing their own category. Rashi on the word sakin tells me it's going to fall and hit you in the foot. So you're nervous while you're holding it. You're already going to spill something that's on a plate. Ma'ot, money, they shouldn't uh, become scattered. And the kikar shimipol yehi nimas, it'll be disgusting. So you don't want that to happen to your uh, to your bread. So you're you're concerned about it. Uh, and therefore, you're not going to pray properly. You're thinking about it. Oh, it says here, by the way, in the Ein Nish, Mishpat, near Mitzvah, Tzadi Vav, 96. So this is codified, right? Mm-hmm. You can't hold these things in hand. And you know, separate sugya, we'll get there when we get there, I suppose. Uh, cell phones. You'll have to hold a cell phone in your hand while you're davening. Uh, if you can use it as a so, sitter or not, another discussion. So yeah. would it be fair to say that Shmuel brings, you might have thought, the first part of this, that it had to do with kibud, a kavod of the Objects. object. But right. Shmuel is coming to say, no, it's really anything else that might distract you or be dangerous. Because once Shmuel comes, you move away from right that from holy just, objects. Right. right. Yeah. Look at Rosh, look at Tosfa, bottom of the page, the last Tosfa on the page, but Amar Shmuel, Sakin Ukaara Vikikar Umaot, Hare Elu Kiyotzi Bahan. Right? So he quotes these things and things like it. It's Rikhlaili Shmuel Lameimar. We needed Shmuel to come and tell us these things because the question is kind of like, what is Shmuel actually adding? There's a bright that tells you not safe for Torah and fill in. Holy things you can't. So you think pedestrian things, mundane things you can? Like, why would you think that? Well, what's the what's the logic? So Tosan answers, there's a Havamina. What's that? That when you're holding holy objects, you're worried you're going to bring them to disgrace if they fall. Therefore, you're on guard. You cannot concentrate. So you might think, though, that things that do not have a consequence other than, okay, if the money falls, I lose the money. If the plate falls, so I'll lose uh, whatever's on the plate. But I say for Torah falls, chas v'shalom, that's a big thing. We wouldn't want that to happen. So that's what he writes, right? So it's a rechlei, lishmo, lemeimar, the lot him adavka to fill in the Sefer Torah, the ikib zayon, since you're worried about the design of Kitvah Kodesh, the word of Hashem is going to fall on the floor, you're thinking the whole time, oh, I better not drop it. And therefore, uh, your, your dot does not meet Yashev when you daven. Right? So, by the way, by the Nose Kalem, there's a big discussion even in Sadi Vav. Can the, when does the Chazan hold the Sefer Torah? Yekampurkan in Mr. Burr, it writes, the Yekampurkan, he holds it. In our shul, I don't think we do that. In many shuls, they don't. But he says, Kiddush yeah. HaChodesh, yeah. the different yeah. things. Uh, what we do, we have mm-hmm. Kelmale, the Tfilot Lishom uh, uh, Medinat Yisrael. Obviously, that wasn't the Mishnah Buri, died in 1933. 
Um, what he, would he have said at Hakamat and Medina? But uh, I don't know. Huh? But then we're taking it from one place to another. This is like to hold it during Tfila. And the point is, why are you saying that Tfila can you hold the Sefer Torah in your hand? So there's provisions for all these things. Yes, this, this. Yes, yes, but it's not so simple that Stam, you can just hold the Torah in your hand when you're davening, yeah. right? So, and you can picture the the uh, sort of the setup, right? Uh, it's not it's not impossible that such a thing could happen. You know, uh, I was just in Poland, so they have the March of the Living, and they bring a little Sefer Torah. They say, let's daven mincha. Can you hold the Sefer Torah while you're daven mincha? Well, you can't put it on the ground, but maybe you have to take turns or give it, put it somewhere, and you can't hold it in your hand. That's the halach of suka. Those you might have thought, yeah, but I don't have a choice. I'm stuck. Yeah, well, you're not stuck. You have to find something else to do with it because the concern you're not going to be able to daven properly. Well, so, the davening yeah. originally, originally, you're not supposed to have a sitter in your hand, but that wasn't because of this. That was right. So I talked about that last year that the Truman Hadashan, uh, at the time of the arrival of the printing press, has a shaila. It's a Simon Yud something, Yud Zion, I think. That can you hold a sitter in your hand? And Shukhanar actually passed his base in the Truman Hadashan. He calls it a machzor. But he says, you can use it. You can hold it. Why? It's an accoutrement to tefillos. I was with Mark a couple weeks ago on Shabbos and camp in the Shear. And, and that's actually what's going on, it seems, with the lulav. The lulav is not a contradiction. It's part of tefillah. It's like incorporated within it. How do we know? When you keep going, it gives us other uh, other examples. So the last line, in the uh, first line, rather, in the wide lines, right? Hatam lav mitzvah ninu v'tarid b'hu. Ha'cha mitzvah ninu v'lotarid b'hu. It's over there. Those objects... There's no mitzvah, so you're tarried, you're going to drop them. But this, it's a mitzvah, so it's it, it's not tarried. The mitzvah of lula, as opposed to kitve kodesh, where if they fall on the floor, there's a big problem <coughs> that they fell down, right? right. So look at um, Rashi. Lav mitzvah ninhu, la'ochzan, v'havyan alav lumasa. They're a burden to you. You have to hold them, take care of them. masa'am, It's heavy or ponderous upon you to have the burden to carry them, to guard them, etc. But hacha, lulav, netilata ulekichata, mitzvahi, umitoch shechaviva mitzvah alav, eima sa'ab shimura kavit alav lotarit. You're happy to hold it. You're getting a mitzvah every second. You're holding it, you're holding it, holding it, and it's part of davening. I mean, anuim, etc. So so that that uh, that aspect as well. And that was part of the shikul for the, for the Truman Hadashan, uh, you can't hold a book. You can't hold a say First, this is Hashem's name in it. There's psukim, there's shma in the sitter. Yeah, but you need it for tefillah. It's part of tefillah. By the by, could you hold a closed sitter in your hand during davening? Less clear. I mean, if you say, like, you're not going to open it. You're just holding it. Can you do that? That's not clear. So this, this Gemara gets quoted in a tshuva on davening with a smartphone. Yeah. This one, this, I just, yeah. I just actually listened to one. And it, yeah. And it, they quoted this stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We did have a you dove. I'm uh, sitting on the airplane and the lights are off, and you don't want to turn on the light because then everybody, you know, you're disturbing the people sitting on either side of you. And it's, uh, you know, 2 a.m. and where you left from, but it's really the morning where you're going to. So you use the Maismanim Air in flight option on Maismanim.com, and it'll tell you how many hours and minutes into the flight based on when you took off is a lot of shachar. And, you know, like I was on a flight, it landed at 12 30 p.m. So I would have missed Shachos completely, but thanks to my, I had, this sheet, I had this sheet of paper in case my battery on my phone would die. Okay, all to say, so I'm diving, it's like it's the equivalent of two in the morning in Chicago. And you had the football player protecting you to your left. Yes, and I had that <laughs> fellow sitting right right next to me. Right, actually, okay. that, right, we had switched back for yeah. diving. But, but uh, I use a smartphone to dive in. I can't use a sitter. If I use a sitter, I can't see anything. And I have to turn on a light. And then, so you're kind of weighing and measuring, but all things being equal using a smartphone, I think uh, there is a question about it because of its multi-purpose use. If you put an airplane mode, that's another thing, you're at a wedding or something, you don't have a sitter. So that's better than nothing. But like to be in shul with it, I think there is a legitimate question. What does that Shuba say? Yeah, it said exactly yeah. that. It said yeah. if you need to do it. Yeah. You know, if it's a shot, yeah. But, but you understand now why. The point is you, you're not supposed to hold things in your hand mm -hmm. uh, because you, well, it, it's a the distraction. Issue there was the distraction, you know, turning off, turning, I think they said turning off your notifications. Yeah, so put it on airplane mode and then, you, you know, you're not going to be disturbed. Right, right. Any related story, and a lot of people don't like to hear this, but it's reality. You can't stop when you're holding a baby. You cannot stop when you're holding a baby. You have to hold the babies. You have to hold the baby. You know, I mean, you put the baby on the floor. Maybe there's some middle ground. Someone else can hold the baby. You put it in a in a crib or something. You can't hold the baby. You can't hold the objects. You're worried you're gonna drop. You're gonna drop uh, Sefer Torah because Kitvi Hakodesh. 
So, uh, and the other things are a masa. So the baby, oh, it's a mitzvah to hold the baby. It's not a mitzvah to hold the baby. It's a mitzvah to daven the Hashem. So it doesn't mean you're never holding the baby, but not at that, at that time. So again, you don't have to be the person to go bang on the, you know, knock on the fellow's uh, shoulder. Excuse me, that's against the halacha. You're not going to make friends that way and bring people close to the Torah. But someone usually yeah, falls yeah. To, the, to the rabbi to have the unfortunate uh, privilege of calling people to say, you know, it's and you're holding a baby. You know, yeah. so, but, but that's why, that's, that's, that's why. So, um, and that's before we get to the issue of crying and distractions in the middle, uh, where uh, I maintain it's a halacha psuka. You can actually walk out carrying the baby during the shmanestra as long as you don't talk and you could just continue the shmanestra outside. Uh, holding the baby. Yeah, well, not holding the baby, but, but, but you can't disturb other people and you're responsible for the baby. So the baby's wailing. You can't. Um, and that also applies yeah. bringing, bringing the baby up to when you get a Leah. No, that's, right? the, that's totally a non starter. Totally. Non -starter. Non Both because of the creator issue. Right. And also, as, as uh, I've heard horror stories, if the baby, God forbid, throws up, it's a baby. Probably. We're talking about some some serious uh, bad things. You say Pator and the shul. It's not right. Yeah. It's oh, not we, right. We used to have a it's not right. About, uh, it's not right. Kids who weren't Torah trained. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's an Indian. But but I'm just saying, like uh, people hold they're holding the baby. It's a family affair. If your child's not old enough to stand on their own, they can't. Uh, they can't. They can't. You Once can't a year, they can come for a colonel. Uh, colonel, colonel. But that's a big. You know, it's not standing with right. the Torah. Let's, go back, the the Let's go back to the Gemara. Let's go back to the Gemara. So Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Tzadik. So Tanya, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Tzadik, Omer, Kachim in Hagen Shan Shiu Shalayim, Adam Yotzim Mi Beitav Lulavu Biyado, Holochu Beit Akanz Lulavu Biyado. Kore Krish Mali Palov Lulav Biado, Kore Bator Venosid Kapa of Manicho Al Gabe Karka. Oh, we finally got to where he puts it down. Here it is. But here we have the, the whole, this memra that the minig of the people in Yushalayim was they go out of the house, they're holding the Lulav. They go to the shul, they're holding the Lulav. They're reading Shema, they're, 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 uh, and, and then they're davening two separate things. Kriyat Shema and Tfila, two different things. Kriyat Shema, Mitzvah, Doraita, Kriyat Shema, and Tfila, or the Ramba Mitzvah Doraita, or the Ramban. Mitzvah the Rabbanan, but uh, the point is the two separate things. Tefillah here, Amida, and they're carrying the lulav the whole time. Kori b'Torah v'Nosid Kapav Menichal Gabi Karka. Then they're going to put it down on the side because they need their hands uh, for that. Rashi clarifies Kori b'Torah Tzarich La Niachal Lulav L'Fisha Gold Sefer Torah Potcho because you roll the Atzei Chaim in order to open them. So, and you put it down. It says here Al Gabi Karka. It's a bit of a question, like literally, just put it down on the floor. It's a Dvar Mitzvah two seconds ago and put it on the floor. Probably means a bench, something like that. If you go to visit the sick to comfort the bereaved, you can. They, they used to hold the lulav in their hand. They would hand it off to somebody else. Why? Rashi, last line of Rashi. Tarid b'shmaita v'yipol miyadav. You're gonna get so enraptured and uh, engaged in the learning. God forbid it shouldn't fall. Uh, fall from your hands that would be really not good so therefore you give it give it away to somebody else to hold uh, while you're learning so my kamash malan what's the point of teaching us all this to tell us how uh, uh, how um uh, how much alacrity they had how much uh, zealousness to, to some is a dirty word but they were they were they were zaris because they, they had excitement when they were trying to do these mitzvahs and and, and here's an example the answer the question uh, uh could fairly be asked um you know, you have here the um, the description of what people did generally. They have the description of the Anshu Yushalayim did. And it seems like there's two madregas. There's the people who did, they, they did it fine. Uh, you know, they, they, someone reported, my father held it when he davened. But there were other people who held it from morning till night. Just kept it in their hand the whole time. So um, the Magen Avram quotes, and the Mishnaburah quotes also, in the name of the Arizal, that there are, is a minug that the Arizal described, that even though technically the taking of the lulav is really during the period of Hallel, and that's why in the Siddur it's always printed the page before Hallel, is to do the Na'anuim immediately after. The Arizal says you should make the bracha to bench lulav in your sukkah before davening, which is not always easy when davening at 6.15, and it's uh, 31 degrees, and you're trying to go out to the sukkah, you know, and there may not even be a light in there. But okay. you can come to the shul one, you know. But there are people who do it. I, I, I try to do it. I've always been successful. Some days, some days I was not successful, but but I, I did try. Yeah, certainly the umptive days, a 9 o'clock uh, minion, 8.30 minion. So I go and I bring my family, you know, my kids, everything. You know, we do it in the sukkah. That's my, my Zayda, all the minutes, my minute. That's the Arizal says do that. But there's a problem. And the problem is, wait, 
What about the fact that we have this reality of halachically speaking, tadr v'she'eno tadr, tadr kodem, that which is more common, more frequent rather, in terms of the mitzvah observance, is meant to go first. What happened to that? So you're supposed to daven first. You daven every day. Lulav is just a few days. So how did the Arizal go against it? Rav Moshe Feinstein dealt with this question. And, um, and he basically says that tadr v'she'eno tadr, Tadir Kodem, that's the, the whole expression. Do the more frequent one first if you have them. So it means to do them later. Uh, that's like, uh, that, that's true if there's a particular time that you do the mitzvah, but when you look in today's daf that we're looking at now, Mem Alpha and Bet, the Anshu Shalayim carried it the entire day. It actually uses the expression, Kachim and Hagen Shalanshu Shalayim, Adam Yotzimi Beitov, Lulava Biado. Where is he going? No, but where is he going first? It says, where does he go? He's at, right? He went to shul. He left his house. He's already holding the lulav. Was he holding it upside down? No, he's holding it. The point is he's doing the mitzvah every moment that he's carrying the lulav. Ah, is when you're already in shul and the mitzvah is take the lulav or the bench lulav or daven. But this is before the minion, clearly. These people held it all day and therefore they were waiting for the time of Hallel which was only the time when there's a minion, not immediately when they woke up. It's not that there's two competing chiyuvim, it's that you have the opportunity to do two mitzvahs at the same time. Okay, then tada v'shon and tada tada kodem. So they'd be losing time from the mitzvah of holding it. That's the mitzvah of Mubchar. So it was okay for them. But see Pesach Frank, I saw quoted in the, um, in the Masif to Gemarim. He says, what about people who are not anti Yushalayim? So, yeah, Maymar only held it during davening, the whole davening, but the whole davening means he must have made the bracha before. In Hastam. Otherwise, like we're going to see in the Gemara in a minute, be the Agbe Nafak as soon as you pick it up, you yotze. So he says that it's really when they both come at exactly the same moment, meaning you're waiting for Hallel. Now you can't decide, you know, I mean, you need it for Hallel. You can't decide in the middle of uh, after Yishtaba, hey, I have a couple minutes here, you know, we're waiting for Mishiach, so let me bench Lulav, because now's the time for Tefillah. But if it's before shul, so make the bracha before in the lulav, in the sukkah, etc. And when you consider this uh, this idea, you, you realize, ah, okay, we're learning new things about tarav shina tadir in this uh, in this context. The um, the the uh, piece from Rav Moshe Feinstein's Chelik Dalid in the Igrat Moshe, and actually the question that he was asked, where he brought this up in this context, is the question of achila kodem sirat haomer. Achila kodem sirat omer. Before you, you know, if you all have a a a, a minyan kavua nine thirty, they have marif. So now comes time they wanna they wanna eat. So we say, okay, if you have a minyan kavua, you know there's a set time. It's on a calendar, even if it's a shul calendar, you know whatever. There's mine eight o'clock. You don't have to wait till daven marif before you eat because you have it on a calendar. All things being equal, though, if it gets dark out, really you should daven before you eat if you're not going to a minyan. In this case, you have it at Kavua, but now it's Sphira. So is it also mutter to, to eat first, even though it's before Sphira, or do you have to count Sphira first? Tata 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 you know? I eat every day. <laughs> right, well, I'm just, times, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, but right. But the eating. time it comes up on, on uh, Friday night, it's all on Makabo shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So but but because the mitzvah time hasn't even come yet. Right. Right. So he gets into the whole discussion back and forth. And in that context, there's a whole paragraph, so he's maybe that's what we quote from this uh, this idea of the um, of the Arizal that if you want to follow the Arizal uh, based on what was quoted by the Magen Avram Mishnah Bura, really really based on the if you want to put everything in a row you should stop davening everyone should go outside to the Shul Sukkah maybe to their own home that's a Tirchad Tzibur you're not really going to do that Therefore, it's before at home. So you gotta make the bracha. But if you're for the Anshay Shalayim, there was like this independent idea. I'm gonna yeah. carry it all day. If I'm going to be Mavakar Chola, I'm showing up at the hospital yeah. carrying the Dalad meeting, which by the way is always a good idea during the uh because you never know the print didn't twist the bench. When you said everybody should stop and go outside. The Arizal maintained that the benching of the Lulav should happen inside the sukkah. So according to the if you wanted to get, you know, line up all the shitas. You want to fulfill the what the Arizal says, the Magan of Ram quotes, the Mr. Burr quotes it, 
it would mean everyone have to stop and you want to keep Tadir in a Tadir in a pure way, stop davening before Hallel. Everyone's going to go out to the sukkah, bench Lulav, then come back in and then have Hallel. Eh, not going to happen. Right, right. Nachon? In the shul, right, 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 right. Easier during COVID. Right, right. So, uh, so he said, he said, I'll read, I'll read you the lash and I put it on the screen here. The gambalul of Shinoagim Harbim Medakik in Levarak Kodem Atfila. To me, honey, me had the Tadir Kodem. Who like Tam Mam, who me ha, the heavy Amagin Avram, the Simon Tough Ration on Betsy Cotton Gimel, the Hashalah Kotab, she and Nanea Basuka, and then the Shla, though it's originally from the Arizal, Ushe Yehaku Ad Achar Hazar Hashats, uh, the Shahri, Yetur Hadid Sibura Gadol, it's a me better Knesset La Soka Ulavarak Sham. And the Rama wrote that it's also there's an idea to hold the sukkah, the lulav, excuse me, when you go from your house into the shul and also during all of davening. So, uh, okay, so Mamela, well, Mamela goes on to say, Mamela Mukhrich Lavarach Kodam Lasiata, right? So, so, okay, so therefore, you know, he's working it out. He basically based it on the Anshe Yushalayim, but the Mikre Kodesh, which is how Frank was still saying, yeah, but let's say you're not from the Anshe Yushalayim. <laughs> the Moshe said, everyone should rely on Anshe Yushalayim, but if you're not, Okay, so also the, the two mitzvahs didn't come at the same time. Tadav Shem and Tadir is where literally there's a clash at this very moment. Which one do we do first? Right? And by the way, sometimes it does get overridden, as we know, for other purposes. Um, lighting Hanukkah candles in shul on Motzei Shabbos and uh, flip it with Abdullah. But at home, Tadav Shem and Tadir. Yeah? If you're picking up the lulav, you're, you're Yose, one follows your Yose on, on the lulav just by picking it up. Right. So if you're taking a lulav to shul. Exactly. How would you get it there? Unless you're carrying it upside down the whole time. So if you carry it in the bag, what we're going to come to, that's the next sugya. That's the next sugya. Anyway, we'll go to the uh, to the next um, the next sugya, which is actually the bottom of the page right here. So, so uh, it, it, uh, I mean, I have often bench lulav at home before I come to shul, I, I, in, in the sukkah. Is that the right way to do it? Or yes. It, okay. Yes, perfectly fine. But if you found a Jew who was coming to shul and Davka waiting to make the bracha to go right in to, to Hallel, that's also good. You know what Reb Chaim did? Yeah, it's on Lam. Well, Reb Chaim, I'm pretty sure did it in the uh, in the in the shul before Hello. You look, we, we saw. That's what you said. The shul, yeah, they they yeah, waited yeah. for being in this shul yeah, right for Hello. Yeah. yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, I don't remember which. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm feeling feeble minded at the moment, but. We we talked about that right. not knew him on 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 thirty seven B. So that's where there was a whole thing in Tosfot there about when that the not knew part of it. So the brach goes right to not knew him. Therefore, if you're doing it in your sukkah before, it may not be enough to just give three shakes. You may have to actually do the not knew him in the sukkah when you make the bracha, mm -hmm. all cardinal points. Right. If it's right before Hallel, uh, a bracha to flip it right side up, -da -da, and bracha into Hallel and go right in. But if it's separate and distinct another time, you probably do have to do the Nanuim, is what we saw previously. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's supposed to, it's supposed to. So, Rabbi Yossi Omer Yomtif, remember this was uh, back from the Mishnah, which we had previously on um, on, on uh, 41b at the top. I was just looking back, so I wanted to see if there was a, the Memra was from Rabbi Yomtif Mazaka before, but this is pretty much, you know, you, you know, the beginning of this Mishnah is the Stam Mishnah on 41b. And at the top, uh, uh, at the end of the Mishnah, if a person accidentally on uh, 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 Sukkot fell out on Shabbat and not allowed to take this, the Lulav out uh, into Rishut HaRabim, but by accident they did, um, and uh, they brought it to Rishut HaRabim, they're Potter. Why? Ah, uh, because they had permission. What's the permission? Rashi on the Mishnah shows you Bereshut, Bereshut Mitzvah. She had tarred b'Mitzvah u'Mechashev ve'Asuk u'Memar la'Soto mitochach ta'a v'Shachach shu Shabbat. The person uh, knows you not to carry on Shabbos. They made a mistake. They're so busy with the mitzvah that they're they're, they're tumbling about it. They want to do the mitzvah. They ran out of the house. 
and they forgot that it was Shabbos. Because Savar of Yossi, Ta'a B'dvar Mitzvah, B'shagag, B'davar Karet, Kvatim Ekorba. Rabbi Yossi holds, <coughs> excuse me, Rabbi Yossi holds mm-hmm. that he doesn't have to bring a korban, which is strange. Yeah. If you forget it's Shabbos and you light a fire, you have to bring a korban. If you're carrying a lulav, design. Once he has the lulav in shul, even though he accidentally carried it there, can he use it for non-nuum on Shabbos? We're not using it. <coughs> yeah, but <laughs> he, he got there, but is, sir, but can you do it for non well, well, I don't, but you're not supposed to have your lulav in shul. But let's say hypothetically, the guy did. Look at the beginning of the mystery. You remember? <clears throat> the people would bring their lulav. There, there, there's two historical moments going on here. People would bring the lulav before Shabbos to shul, and then they would use it on Shabbos in shul on Sukkot. That's what it says. The other reason is that the people would bring their lulav before Shabbos to shul, and then they would use it um, right, it's right. It's caring. Where are you reading right. from? Uh, Mishnah forty-one B. It's a long time ago like since we saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. I, I, I know the Mishnah, but where does it say they actually carried it? That you, you used it in shul. I don't, I don't see that. Oh, that was before. They had it in here. I don't know what you mean. On Shabbos or in general? On Shabbos. Isn't that? There's two historical phases over here. There's two historical phases. Historical phase number one, they brought it on. Uh, they brought it before Shabbos, and on Shabbos they they had it in shul. They did not know it. But hello, yeah. That was this, this is before before the gezeira. Yeah, we talked about it. Before the gezeira. Correct. Okay. I mean, then came Zira the Raba. Then they said, "Forget it. We can't do it anymore." And Mark, that's why I would say that what I asked, the answer should be no. But then people might think, oh, right, they changed their minds, and now you can bring But, it, but Rabbi Yossi but seems to be Kodem Gzeira. Huh? Rabbi Yossi seems to be Kodem Gzeira, I think. Yeah. When was the Gzeira? After the, the base of the was destroyed, the first one? Second one? Yeah, Not the first one, second one, second one. Um, you know, um, the, the, the Gzeira, Gzeira de Rabba, you're not allowed to carry... Now to ca- you know to take it on Shabbos. We're worried we're going to carry it as a rabbin. Here the point was you're supposed to bring it Arab Shabbos. And this guy didn't remember that it's Shabbos. He thinks it's Tuesday of Cholamoid. So he grabs it and he runs out of his house to Shul. So now that he gets to Shul, they tell him, you know it's Shabbos, you won't have to carry it. Oh, I uh, everybody else has a little of an etro because uh-huh. it's before the Xera. Uh-huh. So the point is he's saying, well, you shouldn't have done it, but you're totally putter. Why? Rashut. What's the Rashut? The Rashut is, oddly enough, Rashut Mitzvah. And this is a very strange idea. I made a mistake while I was trying to do a mitzvah, and therefore I'm somehow off the hook from the consequences. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird because even if it was shogeg, it's still case, shogeg. It's right. still shogeg, right. But here's the, so, here's the, here's the Indian. The, the mitzvah of Lulav is not just the moment of picking it up, as we just saw in the Gemara previously. Sounds like there are a lot of people who think, as long as you hold it, you're getting a mitzvah. And we saw previously 37B, 38, 38B was about Hallel. You need it during Hallel. It's like part of tefillah for the Na'anuah. So part of the fulfillment of the mitzvah is still transpiring when you get to Shul and in Shul. So the, the mitzvah like a lulav is still right, so? Yep. Right? And carrying... And that's the Rabbana. Uh, Karen, we should have still right up. And it says it's still right up. So you broke Shabbos to keep the mitzvah? Ugh, that's not good. Yeah, so. But he didn't do it on purpose. He actually thought, remember it was Shabbos. So, so I give him a korban, something. Yeah. Oh, Rabbi Yossi, not everybody agrees. Obviously, it's Rabbi Yossi saying it. Not other people think that's wrong. But Rabbi Yossi thinks, yeah, but I was trying to do a mitzvah. So you're not going to hold me accountable for doing the wrong thing. I did the right thing. But you still did the wrong thing. Yeah, okay, but uh, but I was trying, I was trying my best. He's a das yachid. It doesn't so, sound so like same, everybody has agreed. So the same principle would apply that if you're carrying your talis on Shabbos and you have your tefillin in there, and by mistake you come to shul and your and your tefillin is in your is in good your, point, good point. But that's muksa. Muksa is only the rabbi. Muksa is the rabbi. But the luchah is also muksa. But you're carrying a reshut harabim is the problem. If you carry tefillin or a talis from reshut harabim, that's the mitzvah. That's a isra doraita. Right, but the right. The, let me throw a difference out there. All right, the difference would be that to fill. Well, if you wouldn't 
put to fill in on there's something inherently wrong with to fill in on Shabbos, right? That no, uh, we the, end up saying we don't do it. This call... has nothing to do has has as much to do with the to fill in as it is with the carrying. The carrying is it, it's, yeah, it's, it's an object that's considered the, Mozart, right. There's nothing particularly wrong if there were a bunch of the loving there with doing a naun except that it's a gazera of chazal for prohibiting it because there is a gazera so yeah yeah well, yeah the wrong wrong with that. So it's the, yeah there is it is an oath to have two osos, right right and you have shadows so, in the verse so yeah but in the case right in the case of lula theoretically you could perform the mitzvah but if there were right. 200 lulav in here we do it right. we could do it so the issue is just the carrying Right. Still doesn't make sense to me why you'd be putter, but it would seem once you're here in the Lulavim are here, you would be able to use them. Kodem Zera. Yeah, Kodem Zera. If you look at 42B, so we skipped ahead a whole page in one night, 42B, the bottom line, second to last line on the page, 42B, right? Oh, or third to last, Amai, Tilt to the Ba'amahu. Why is the Gemara Mishnah going back and forth about how many days you can take the Lulav and the Arava, and it's not all the days of the Yantif? Amai, Tilt to the Ba'amahu, Velit Chesh Shabbat. It's just an issue of carrying, right? So, so maybe Shabbos should be should be uh, should be should be, should be pushed away. You know, your Min Torah. You know, if you're in the Mikdash, all Shiva. So, what what's the Siag? To say that you can't you can't touch it at all if you could get around the carrying problem why should it be right answer amaraba xera shamit lana biyado biyelech etzel baki lil mod viavirano dalad amot birshud harabim behind the time of the so far behind the time of the megillah that's the reason that's the reason right it's also interesting that the entire mitzvah of lulav is really a carrying element right? yeah yeah, I mean, because lifting, holding, so, carrying, so, right? Right. So, so that could make it an exception in someone's mind. Yeah. Meaning that, right? Because there's no other aspect to it besides carrying the holding it, or the waving it. But waving it wasn't the mitzvah. The Torah says, "Take." Who smacht them? Lifting the Torah, taking. And the question is, what is the smacht them? It's in the right, right, right. precincts but, of the mikdash, but it seems to also have to do with uh, moving around. I understand, but. It, uh, I, I don't think Rabbi Yossi's opinion. I mean, we may we don't follow his opinion, but his opinion isn't restricted just to Lulav. I think he has a general opinion that if you accidentally carry anything for the sake of a mitzvah or do a, anything for the sake of a mitzvah, and let, let me let now let's go into the Gemara. I mean, this is a good fruitful discussion. By the by, we'll come back to the issue of the you know it's coming because it's forty two B. Right. 43a is spoiled? like before the Takana after the Takana. What spoiler alert? Ah, well, I just don't want to you know, keep you coming back for the next parak. Well, it's like a jumping off point. Well, we finished the parak, I'm coming back again, but now you have to you have to see it through. So, look at the last two words. Amra Baye, Lush, and El Shloyatsabo, top of 42a. Right? When did when did Rabbi Yossi say this that the fellow is 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 putter? Right? It has to be that you weren't Yotza yet. Aval Yotzebo, Chayav. But if you're stomp carrying it around, no, that's violating Shabbos that you cannot uh, do. Yeah. Now, the so Gemara says, so wait, 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 how's that even possible? Hamid Agbe, not fuck bay. As soon as you lifted it up, you, you, you did right, mitzvah. So answers the Gemara, I'm gonna buy a, okay, Shahafcho. You carried it upside down. Yeah. Uh, so you were in Yotse, or you carried the Atrog upside down. But the point is, you carried something upside down. Rava Amar, Afil Temish Lohafcho. Rava says, you don't even have to turn it upside down. What? Achamayaskina, what's the case? Kikon Shiotsio, but Kli. You put it into a vessel. You put it in a carrying case. Ah, Rava. Who do Amar Lakicha? They davar aches malakicha. Rava generally holds if you wear gloves and you pick it up and you wrap it in a beautiful kerchief or something that it's considered good. Uh, so what do you mean? It's not. It's not considered uh, that you took it. Oh, Hanimili derach kavod has to be something that's actually for something that beautifies it. Rashi says a ah, kerchief. Kegon besuder. Shkorach yada besuder. Camarina and Lael, you want to you want to sort of beautify it in that way. But if it's not, they're covered. What? The camel hair. Oh, mom, it's the camel hair. I'm a Derek Bizayon low. If it's a way that's denigrating, so not so. What's the Derek Bizayon? Rashi says, Kigon Bikar, you put it on a plate. Put it on a plate. Um, would not work, right? So, in other words, according to Rava, even if everything was Kederek Gidilatan, but it's in a on a plate, not not gonna 
you know, in a, in a, in a, in a dish, that's not going to work. A car yeah, is a plate yeah, or a dish. Then, then you're fired for carrying the dish. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got to believe too, if he's smart enough to figure all these different ways. Yeah, out, yeah, the yeah. Shot yeah, all right, what, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, but... But um, <laughs> right. yeah, listen. But it, it's a strange, it's a strange sheet. Uh, it's clearly a strange sheet uh, of uh, of Rabbi Yosef. Let's see the rest of the Gemara because he, Rav Huna chimes in and he points out, "I'm a Rav Huna." Omer Haya Rabbi Yosi. I remember Rabbi Yosi used to say, anywhere directly from him, but Rabbi Yosi was wont to say it was too too early for Rav Huna. But Olat Haof Shemim Tzeit Bein Agafayim Bekasavur Chatat Haof He the Achla. Pater. You're not allowed to eat an ola, but you can eat a chatat. Yeah, the Quran have to eat a chatat, part of a chatat. So the birds got mixed up. The place where they did the malika on the birds, both for chat, for olat uh, ha'of and for chatat ha'of, was in close proximity. So the the Kohen became confused. He thought it was a chatat ha'of. He ate it. And then they told him, you know, that was an ola. You're not allowed to eat an ola. It's me'ila. Um, it has to go on the mizbech. So what does Rabbi Yossi say? Potter, how could it be? Micah Masmalan, dita bidvar mitzvah potter. Right? So he made a mistake with something that relates to a mitzvah. We'll go back and analyze this in a minute. But he, he did something that was in the, in the moment of doing the mitzvah, he had a mistaken assumption where he thought he's fulfilling the mitzvah. And in fact, he was not. He's potter. The Gemara says, well, hainu Isn't that the same case we just had? No. Maudetema. You might have thought hatam hu deta'a bidvar mitzvah pator. Hainu de'avad mitzvah. You might have thought over there, when it says over there, actually means our Mishnah. You made a mistake, you didn't realize it was Shabbos. But were you picking up the, at the lulav, meaning you were yotze in the mitzvah? Yes. But in the case of the olad ha'of, you ate something you were not allowed to eat, ever. Doesn't matter where, not here, not there, not now, not later, never. And you ate it. So there wasn't actually even a mitzvah there. It's like your mistaken assumption, but then a mistaken assumption about conditions leading to fulfillment of the mitzvah, like in the Lulav case, it's rather a mistake and you didn't do a mitzvah at all. You didn't eat the chata da'ov. You ate the ola da'ov. That's, that's the no-no. So the avahachal da'tav, dvar mitzvah, velo avad mitzvah, emalo. You might think, since you made a, mi- a mistake in a dvar mitzvah and you didn't actually end up doing a mitzvah, Aim alone, meaning you're not going to be putter. Kamash Malan, that teaches us that in fact you are putter. That's a big chiddush. According to Rabbi Yossi. According to Rav Huna's reading of Rabbi Yossi. Yeah. Meitve. Wait a second. This is a total contradiction to something else we have. A brighter involving Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi Omer has shochet and a tamid she'enum avukar kil chata b'shabbat in order for a korban to uh, be offered. They had to examine it for four days. We know this uh, many of you are familiar with this from Korban Pesach. Shabbat Gadol was the 10th. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They needed the time. Took it on the 10th. They needed four full days before Shechid at Korban Pesach to examine it, to uh, make sure there aren't any blemishes, etc. What happened? This fellow took the wrong animal. It was never checked. And he shechted it on Shabbos to offer it as a Korban Tamid. By the by, if he does that, even if it turns out it has no movement, puzzle cannot be used. Serbiosi says, Chayev Chatat, Vitzar, Tamid Acher. He's Chayev Chatat and he has to bring a Tamid. Wait, I, but he's Tavid of our mitzvah. So, Amar Lei, Bar Mina Dehoi, Deha Itmar Allah, Amar of Shmuel, Bar Chatoi, Amar Rav Hinuna, Sava, Amar of Yitzchak, Bar uh, Ashian, Amar Rav Huna, Amar Rav, it's a lot of people. Kigon Shiva Milishka Sheinan Mavukarin. Basically, uh, uh, this this is uh, it's not the same case, and why not? Because you actually took the animal from absolutely the wrong chamber, and they're pretty clearly marked. In other words, had it been uh, Wednesday and you went to the wrong chamber and you brought the wrong animal, that's that's egregious. Now you went to the wrong chamber on Shabbos. You could be tarred in the mitzvah. But it's not like the case of the birds where all the malika of the birds happening in the corner of the Mizbech and you just don't know what's what. On the contrary, you should have known what's what. Rashi writes this at the, uh, at the bottom. The wide lines. Um, 
well, wide-ish lines of Rashi, oh, where the wide, right, where the right. narrow line, narrowest lines yeah. of Rashi get wider. No, no, no. Rabbi, Rabbi Yosi, Amar Shochet Atam Yitzin Mabukar Kehel Chato Min Amumin B'Shabbat Chayav Chata. Why? Mishum Shchita B'Shabbat. It's not a Shal Mitzvah. V'Einu Docha. Right? Uh, 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 it, it's not. It's not going to be Docha Shabbos. Alma Ta B'Dvar Mitzvah. You can't use the V'Einu Docha Alma Ta B'Dvar Mitzvah. V'Lo Asa Mitzvah Chayav. No Mitzvah here. Sorry, Torah Zeh. Because he thought that, <coughs> but he shouldn't have thought that. He should have realized. Why not? You can't say he was nervous. Which one should I take from these? It's in a totally separate room. Right, he can't say he's afraid of the time, the zman of the tamid. Why? She carved the mezi to the low dark village called Lahavkin mezi yavi. He just didn't take care of it, and in the end, yeah, and he can't, and therefore he is chayav achata because he can't argue that it was like in the moment he didn't know what to do. He was tarred in the mitzvah. He went to the wrong spot, and it would have been the wrong spot no matter what day of the week it was, and he brought it out. And you didn't have you didn't have a time price. Could have could have the other Quran around, etc. So that's that's where the Gemara where the Gemara goes with it. Now, if you look at Tos uh, Tosfot at the top of the page, Tosfot tells us something interesting about Abaye. Abaye said that it must be a case where he turned it upside down because otherwise carrying it alone would be enough to cause the uh, fulfillment of the mitzvah. Mid Agbe Nafukbe. Tosfot. Amar Abaye Shahavcho. Mid Yitzrich Lishanuye Hachi. The fact that the, that the Gemara had to go out of its way to tell us, Abai had to clarify. It's like it's upside down. Masma de Svirale, the mitzvah ain't unsrichet kavana. Makes it sound like otherwise he's of the opinion that absent turning it upside down, just the fact of carrying it in the street, you'd be able to the mitzvah of, 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 of fulfilling, taking without the kavana. without any kavana. Wow. And this is a shas machloket, a machloket really yeah, among Amoraim and a machloket among Rishonim and among Achronim. Do mitzvot need kavana, yes or no? Yeah. So, Shulchan Aruch even paskins, Yesh Omrim mitzvot enet tzrichet kavana, Yesh Omrim mitzvot tzrichet kavana, v'chein halacha. Which one? You're both right. You're both right, right. Mm-hmm. So, yes. you know, and, and some say, probably Shulchan Aruch, the mm-hmm. klalim, the klale hapsak implies strongly that you go according to the second yesh omen when there's two. But it's not always a hard and fast rule of Usher Weiss and his klale hamitzvot sefer, beautiful sefer. He uh, enumerates umpteen examples where uh, the Shulchan Aruch gives you uh, one, two, and then says, yeah, but follow opinion number one, not opinion number two. So it's a klal, it's not a it's not a achlata. It's a klal, it's, it means a principle, doesn't mean that there's never a reason why it doesn't uh, uh, follow suit. So now, let's say it wasn't Shabbos and you brought it the wrong korban. Aren't you also over, uh, would you bring it, it have to be a chatas also? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. even more so yeah. than Shabbos. Yeah, even more so, yeah. I'm back, I'm back in the top of the Gemara, the first, the second line of the Gemara. I'm in Tosfot, I'm Rabbi Shahafcho, when you turn it upside down. Why did I have to mention that? Tosfos says, well, that's because had you not turned it upside down, if the guy just ran onto the street carrying it, he's going to be Yotze. Even if he didn't have Kavana, it'd be Yotze, right? So obviously you have to do something, right? The Ha'akai amotz the Rishon HaRabim. The Ha'atam, in Shaykh mit Kavin Latzeit, ko Kamad Laberach. And in that case, you can't say that he had Kavana, uh, 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 you can't say that he had Kavana Latzeit, as, uh, uh, sorry, the Ha'atam, you can't start arguing that he had kavana latzeit as long as he didn't make the bracha, right? Because the point is he's he's on the road uh, uh, out there. He's the Gemara takes it as an assumption. Line number two, mida agbe nafak be. As soon as you picked it up, that's it. You're yotze. So the guy's carrying. He's running, right? Oh, but further, but furthermore, isn't this a guy who's going to the to go learn? how to do the mitzvah, which means he doesn't know how to do the mitzvah, which means he doesn't know about the idea that uh, picking it up is going to be enough to, um, 
to uh, 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 cause the trigger the right to be yotze, right? Uh, but maybe he knows enough to turn it upside down. That seems to be the implication. But Tema, but there's a question here. The Besofer Ubeiti in the fourth parak of Rosh Hashanah. Dama Rava mitzvot einan srichot kavana kamotiv le abaye tuva v'shema abaye kible mine. If you look at the Gemara in uh, Rosh Hashanah Chav Chedam Bet, Abaye seems to be arguing the exact opposite point that mitzvot srichot kavana. In the end, though, it sounds like. Uh, he uh, acquiesces or accepts the word of Rava, who holds mitzvot einan srichot kavana, and that's what he seems to be going with here in our uh, in our uh, uh, Mishnah, uh, our Gemara, rather. So there's no comparison here to Lilo Bagazel and then carrying and, and being mote when you're outside on Shabbos carrying. It's Lilo Bagazel, you're not, you're not Yose. Here you, you're carrying the mitzvah, Without cover, just by carrying it, by carrying it and, and uh, committing an aver. So how are you yotze? So lulav aguzel is inherent in the status of the object. It's a mitzvah bab avera came to your hand with a crime. Okay. Here, your crime, which is not a crime, ben avera, but ben lamako, is at the exact moment of the mitzvah, but it's not how it came to your hand. No. The problem with the Lulav Aguzel, the acquisition has tainted the object in, in, in you know, in stealing. Yeah. And, so, and why by, is, so why is he carrying outside taint the object or taint the mitzvah? Because you already own the object. And from the perspective of the owning, it's there. Okay. And you didn't do it, right? It's not it's not a malicious intent. The point is the guy's tar. He doesn't know what's going on. He's flying out the door. Once he's running out the door, he doesn't, he doesn't think... Uh, he doesn't think about the fact that, hey, it's Shabbos today. He forgot. And if he did it to Mazin? That wouldn't work. I think that would that would be more of an issue. Yeah, okay. that would be more of an issue. Right. Okay. Right. And if it was some way that he was like picking it up as he's walking out the door, that would be that would be an issue. That would be an issue. Yeah. But he picked up inside yeah. and then went out. That would, that would, that would, that we're back to the, the you know, there was Yotze when he was in the house, but then he got in a for going outside because he was Yotze already. That's what we're saying here. If he was already Yotze in the mitzvah, then he carries it outside, so he was over an avera, taken outside. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, say it again. The, um, yeah, I always mean the dal minim. Yeah, every time, every time, he's a dal minim. He's a dal minim. Yeah, yeah. Judah, uh, Judah, do you want to speak? I, I heard voices, so I muted you. But did you want to say something? I don't show me outcha. Unmute. I don't think he's trying to ask a question or not. I can't tell. No, my granddaughter arrived. Ah, but you heard. Yankov, we're happy. Yeah. She yeah. can sit in with us if she wants. What? She can sit in on the shear with us if she wants. It's another minute left. Yeah. We're already at the end over here. Um, look, there's a very big sugi, a very big sugi here. Mitzvot Sri Kavana, Mitzvot Inat Sri Kavana. It runs throughout, throughout. I don't say Shas, uh, in, in terms of the Amoraim. Uh, it's not actually really exactly resolved. Uh, uh, everybody gets into it, trying to understand, um, you know, Tosfot, uh, uh, you know, actually wonders uh, on Lamitet, why can't the prison just have Kavana Shalol Atzeit? If you had Kavana Shalol Atzeit, I will not be behind this mitzvah when I pick up this little of an etrog. Isn't that good enough? You can't be Yotzi Bal Korcho. So uh, the rush says, well, the person doesn't know that halacha. You know, if they knew so much about the halachas, then they wouldn't be having to go to ask questions, simple questions. But they do know because they've seen other people with turning it upside down. They know that part. So they know not, you know, uh, 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 that much they know. Yeah. But uh, there's a question, at least uh, back and forth on this, um, you know, on this uh, on this subject. Um, all right, but uh, too far afield. I don't want to get to farther into the sugya because we had the uh, mincha in a few minutes. Okay, so Ad Khan next week, a Monday night, Memorial Day weekend, as they say, yeah. we'll have a shear. And then it's Shavuos. And then it's Shavuos. Yeah, I'd like to have a shear on Shavuos, maybe. Crazy. No? Without Zoom. Huh? Without Zoom. If you're coming, you're coming. If you're Without not, Zoom. that's it. Well, we but did it. We did it on Sukkot. Why don't we do it on Shavuos? I'd like to. Yeah. Monday of Shavuos. What is it? Monday of Shavuos. Second day. Second day. My rab is it? Then we'll yeah, have after Minchas. This is going to be before. Right. I'll send in a schedule. We're, we're still drawing up the schedule. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay, expect to share next week and the week after. Everything good. Okay. okay.